Hi guys, I'm Harley and this is the Oculus Quest 2 review. Let's go! Now if I do a little bit of intro, for you, those of you that don't know, the Oculus 2 came out about two months ago. The original came out in May 2019 and the second one, Oculus 2, Oculus Quest 2, came out in October this year. So that's about 17 months between the two, which is quite fast for them to bang them both out. Now, after the first one were released, because if you didn't know, Oculus is owned by Facebook. Boo! But o Facebook always promised they would never make Facebook login mandatory. Now, this is quite a big thing, and this is why I'm putting it at the beginning, because that is exactly what Facebook's done. For you to log into the Oculus Quest 2, you need a Facebook account, which really, really put me off. There is ways about avoiding that and going around it. However, they're not official routes and you will lose out on certain features and stuff. So it's best if you don't want to log into Facebook, don't get it on. Simple as. And I think that has now been changed for the Oculus original as well. I think that's a whole wide integration between the two. Sorry about that, guys. So at first of all, there were two versions, but I think Oculus have recently brought a third version out. There's a 64 gigabyte version, the 128 gigabyte version, and on Oculus's website, there's a 256 gigabyte version. Now, all of them are obviously pretty much the same device, just with bigger memory allocation. There is also a kit you can buy with the extended battery pack. Uh, it's got a completely different head attachment and stuff. Uh, it, it's best to just go on Oculus website and look at what's on offer. You can buy the headset separately and stuff. You can buy the battery pack separately. But so I know a lot of people are thinking straight off the bat: Do I? How much memory do I need? Well, from what I've been using it over the last three days, the 64 gigabyte is plenty for me and my family. But right, it all depends on what you want to be using it for. We're going to be using it as a home pretty much all the time. I can't imagine we'll be taking it anywhere. But you can stream games through the Tinterwebs. So if you've got uh, an Oculus Quest 2 but you want to be taking to hotel rooms and wherever else, then it might be best to get the bigger memory. However, if you're at home and you've got a fast internet speed, the 64 will be sufficient. But yet again, if you want games more locally, go for bigger. It really is down to you guys. Have a look about it, have a think about it, think long range, think short range, and make your decision. So, the Oculus Quest. Sorry if my audio's not on par. I'm rushing this because I've literally just bought it. Bang on from Argos. Let's see if we can get it open somehow. The Oculus Quest 2 from Facebook. Just a lot of uh, warnings and notices. Then on the back, some games and next level hardware, blazing fast processor and ultra realistic graphics put you in the center of the action. Jurassic World, Climb 2, Star Wars, Echo NR, Echo VR, obviously VR. Population 1, Beat Saber. Then Oculus. And back to the front. So let's slide it out. There's a box. With the Oculus. Oh, that wasn't supposed to happen. So there's a good reminder for you. If you uh, open it... Make sure you open it the right way and don't spin it around for camera. But there you go, that's how it was sat. Like so. It's beautiful. So we've got some information here. Just so pull these labels out. Battery protection. Pull them out. Then it says on the side of the Oculus there's a power button which is here and then obviously the straps to adjust as well 
I'm not quite sure what that is. And what's in here? Did it, did it, do. Manual. Reference guide, warranty guide. Oh, that's it. And then we've got the charger. So I'm going to play with it, let the kids have a play with it, and then we'll do the review. Let's go! So we'll go down and have a look at Oculus in a minute, but before we do, let's just run through a bit of specs. The first thing I want to mention is how VR works, if no one's ever used a VR, is if you use a VR on your phone, it splits the screen into two, so you get two different perspectives, therefore it makes it 3D. And stuff like the Oculus Quest and the Oculus Quest 2 have two screens, so instead of one screen split in two, it's got two different screens. Each of them screens are 1832 by 1920 pixels per eye. So that is incredibly good resolution for the viewingness of your new dimensional world. Between the original Quest and the Quest 2, the frame rate has been upped. It used to be 72 hertz and now it's 90 hertz. For those of you that don't quite know what frame rate is, basically if you're watching, like a roller coaster for example, if you watch a roller coaster in really high hertz, it'll be a nice smooth transaction. If you watch it in really low hertz, I don't know if you watch a roller coaster video on YouTube or something, and it jitters like that, that's because there's not enough frames per second to um, catch every single smooth motion. So it pictures. Just that's the way it is. An important part of it is the weight, because obviously you've got something attached to your face, so if it's heavy, you're going to be all you get severe neck ache. It is 503 grams, which to be fair, between me, my missus, and uh, as eldest, we've all got different opinions. I don't think it's that bad. Um, and them two don't either, but one or two of them have said, well, you know, you can feel it. I don't know if I've got used to it quick or what, but I think it's all right, I like it. Now, I was reading somewhere online earlier that the battery capacity holds for two to three hours. I don't quite know about that. Where you've been using it every day as much as possible. And it takes two and a half hours to charge. And we've been getting just under two hours of use out of it. Which I think is fair because you don't really want to be using it for more than two out of five hours really. You need your eyes to readjust. You don't want to be doing damage to your eyes, let's face it. And no games should be played all day long. So I don't think that's a good I don't think that's what Oculus have gone for, but I do think it's a good accidental feature. If you do want more battery, like I said, you can buy the battery pack headset, which extends the battery life. The processor is the Qualcomm Snapdragon XR2. We're not going to go into too much detail about that because it's not that kind of review. It's got 6GB of RAM and it's got free IPD settings. Now, like I said, we can look at that a bit closer when we go down. Basically, IPD, we are going into the technicalities of it, is everyone's eyes are slightly more set spaced apart and whatnot. So IPD settings basically let you choose where to put the screens so you can see them properly. Like I said, we will look at that when we go down. But something I was really disappointed at is usually most, even the most basic VR sets, have got an adjuster so you can move them while you're wearing it. Which is good because you can see the focus and stuff. However, this one, with a Quest 2, you have to take it off and adjust them manually. Which I thought were a bit ropey, but there you go. There are batteries in the remote controllers as well. But as far as I've seen, you don't really have to worry about them. They are AA batteries, one in each. And, you know, with you, I have to charge them headset about six times now. And the batteries are still showing 100% for the handheld remotes. So you can't really complain at that. It quite intrigued me that the cable that comes with the Oculus Quest 2, it does come with a power plug, which is good because not many people have a USB-C. Now, I know what you're thinking, I've got a USB-C for my phone, but this is USB-C to USB-C, which is the way forward, because if you're using USB-C to USB-3, you won't quite get the power capabilities that USB-C has. So it is a good thing but it's gone USB-C to USB-C. Although, to be honest with you, I'm not quite sure why they've done that, because USB can carry two amps, and that's what rate it charges at. 
As you'll see when we go down, he's got four dots. They're the monochromatic cameras. And they basically pan everything out in a monochromatic way. So it's like black and white. It's a bit like you're looking at night vision on Splinter Cell or something. And you can see and everything. And that's great because basically what that does is it allows the eye gestures. You can do things like when you're moving the screen, you can grab and move them and all that malarkey. But as well as you draw a boundary. And when you step out of a boundary, you can see where things are. So... You draw a boundary to know where the cupboards are and then all of a sudden if you get close to the cupboard the picture will start fading and you'll start being able to see real life which is a great safety feature you can also use voice commands but the something that i found were quite interesting it's already got built-in recording streaming and casting now something that i didn't realize a lot of the dependency of the VR relies in your phone. You can go on your phone and cast it. So if someone else is playing on the device, you can log into the app and press cast. You can look at it on your phone. You can look at it on the uh, smart TV. It is really pretty impressive. So in the nature of me not actually scripting things, I ain't got a clue how this review is going to pan out. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go down, have a look at the actual device and the remotes, and then we'll do some footage with me wearing it. Having a look around, moving my hands and all that sort of malarkey to see. So, so you get a proper feel of what is. And we'll just take it from there. Uh, hopefully by now I've already chucked in some footage where needed. So you're not just looking at my mush all the time. Let's go. So here we are. This is the headset. As you will see, we can adjust it for smaller heads that way. So if you've got a wide but not very long head. And then we've also got these toggles, so we can make it wider, or we can pull them and make it shorter. So that is a nice little bit of simple engineering, basically. On here, we've got the speakers, one on either side. Now, these do, obviously, your ear would be about here, but it does sound quite well. And with the volume fully turned up, it doesn't fully cut everything out. But fear not, because on this side, we also have a 2.5mm earphone jack, which is your standard earphones. So if you do want to cut the entire world out in regards to audio, you can do so just there. Here is the USB-C port. We've got two microphones to get proper sound. I do like the fact that there's one on either side. Here we've got a volume adjustment. And then inside here... Let me just shift this back out of here. Inside here is our two lenses and screens that we talked about. You can actually get subscription add-ons for them. We have to pull this out so we can see a bit better. And then if we look in here, just on here there is a number. So it's currently at one. Then we've got two. And then we've got three. And like I said, that's all about how wide your eyes are and custom to person. Just above that number is a sensor as well. So if you take it off your head, it will go into standby. And then as soon as you, you don't have to do anything else, as soon as you put it back on, it'll come back on. Just a nice little elegant way of saving battery, really. You might have seen on the unboxing that there is a spacer. Yet again, just a bit more custom customization for it to fit you individually bang that back on bang that back in so on this side we've got the power button and we've got the led which demonstrates the battery and everything else and then we've got the four monochromic cameras we were talking about before so that's it. I don't think there's really anything else that I want to discuss down here. It does fit quite nice, everything. It is lovely. Let's quickly move on to our remotes. So these are our remotes. Let's hold it the right way. And there you go. That is... The, the, I watched someone earlier and said they feel like his hand doesn't fit properly. I think they fit lovely. They, they just fit. you got your trigger buttons here. And you got trigger buttons here. All the number buttons are numbered and stuff on the game. And the best thing is about the game, not every game 
but a lot of the interfaces, if you look down, you can actually see these. You can see what the buttons say, like Y, X, B and A. You've got the Oculus button here, and you've got the menu button here. But I haven't yet used the menu button. You've also got these, which can be used to scroll. Uh, you can select and pull down, or you can use your fingers and pull down. But I've quite often just been using the toggle to scroll up, down, left and right. I've never quite understood what these are for. I'm sure there's a purpose. Surely it'd be better to go all the way around your hand and protect your entire hand. I'm not sure. These also come as custom, so obviously these go on your wrists. And then it just slips on. Kabang. Now, quite often with stuff like the with Nintendo Wii, I never actually use the wrist straps. But for this, I would suggest you do. Because depending on what game you're playing, you do actually feel a bit, whoa. Um, but yeah, I've never dropped them. And the battery pack that we mentioned before is just here. Look. Single AA battery, which does come with, or at least my kit came with. Beautiful. Let's have a look at the game. So there you go, that's the Oculus Quest 2. What do we think about it? Well, when all said and done, I am not a fan of the Facebook login at all. It was a big no-no for me. I'd have much rather not had one at all. But having said that, the device with forgetting the Facebook login, because I know a lot of you won't mind logging in on Facebook, is it worth the £300 I paid for a 64 gig version? Yes, without a doubt. The, the entire family have been having so much fun with this. Like I said, the Beat Saber is wicked fun. And that's the game I played on most, to be fair. But the stuff like the Jurassic World app, where you get to be this far away from blue. And you know, the strange thing is, the on that app, as you're walking forward, if you actually move your feet, it actually feels like you're moving forward. Now, there is certain things, like the, the odd time, you've got your controllers here, and all of a sudden, it recognises that one of the controllers is up here. But let's be fair, that always happens in games. There's always the odd glitch. Irrespective of what it is and when it is, the kit is amazing. It really is. And for £300... I mean, if you look at uh, the new Xbox that have just been released, three hundred pound. I'd much rather have an Oculus. I don't know if that's my age. I don't know if kids are going to think that the shooting games on there. The big downside is, like any console, you do have to buy the games, and then even then, there's no guarantee that you're going to be able to play the game how you want it. Like Beat Saber, for example. If you don't go through the effort of side loading, then you're going to have to buy Beat Saber for twenty three quid. And then you have to buy songs within Beat Saber. So it will cost quite a fair bit of money. But let's be fair, games do that these days. And as developers and more developers come into this and more and more games start being made for VR, it will start to become cheaper and there'll be less things like that uh, happening, I hope at least. One more thing to mention as well, I do want to do a quick comparison between the Oculus's and I'm not going to go into full detail because if you look in the description, I'll put a link out to how you can compare the different Oculuses on Oculus's website. But the Rift, I haven't done this, so I'm not going to go into too much detail. But using the Oculus link, which is built into the Quest 2, you can link it up to the PC, which means you can play the Oculus Rift games and other VR games. As you've seen on the, probably saw on the video I've just done, you can watch Netflix on it and stuff. I haven't been on Netflix, let, let's be fair, if I'm watching a film I want to watch it with Steph or the kids, I don't want to sit on my own watching it. Um, but, but the overall experience is phenomenal and I really am excited for the next level in VR because we're going above and beyond. £300, is it worth it? Without a doubt. If you don't want to log in via Facebook, don't buy one. Point blank end of.
So there you go, my first non-vape review. I know it hasn't been as perfect as I'd have hoped. Uh, I know there's bits and bobs everywhere. There was bits that I've missed. I didn't want this review to be an in-depth look at it. I didn't want it to become a game review. I just wanted a little bit of context on the game and the actual console and whether it's worth it. Because I know there's a lot of people out there right now wondering about whether we should get one for the kids and stuff. We also went on a roller coaster app as well, I forgot to tell you that. The roller coaster app, I just stood up and uh, completely lost my sensor awareness. I didn't know where I was, so I had to take it off. Crazy times. So, there you go. That is my very first non vape review. Quite an odd one as well. Quite a lot to talk about. But I think I've gone about right way. If it's no good, please bear with me. My other reviews will be better, I promise. But that's all for me. Stay tuned. Peace. There is batteries in the remote controllers as well they are quite nice and easy though they're just dual <clears throat> there is batteries in the remote controllers as well however they are just a single 18 there are batteries in the remote controllers as well but they're nice and easy they're just a single eight <sighs> then you're gonna have to buy games within that <laughs>